it's that time of the year again. It's snow season. And this time we headed out to Merino Farm for some family fun in the snow. It was a bit slippery, but it was fun nonetheless. Lekker early, we've got Christian in the seat, we're getting some coffee at Engine, Kenlin's here, Wahid's on his way, uh, Daniil is here, Farmer's on his way, Sean is here, it's going to be an epic, epic trip out of the snow, yo, wrong way, it's cold though, very cold. We left home at 5am to get there early to beat any lines, it was 3 degrees while driving there and it dropped down to as low as 1 degree. Luckily we left nice and early, so there wasn't actually a line when we got there. The snow on the mountain. Take me back to my days in Norway. Hey Carol! We are in Sierras. My wife says I must roll the window up. Why? Why? Huh? The snow is low lying. It's like right here on the side of the road. We are entering Merino now. Yes, let's look at the snow. Looks like Christmas. Driving through the foothills of Merino Farm and to the base, you feel like you're in a forest somewhere in Canada. It's really an amazing, untouched place. And the perfect place for the family to throw some snow. Everybody sees the opportunity to get their snow picks because, I mean, this is once a year. What do you do? You take snow picks. That's the diesel is over there. I can't move. I'm stuck on the sleet. That was no joke. I couldn't get out of the snow there. Oh, I just almost fell. <laughs> so I couldn't get out of the snow there. I was standing on a complete standstill in four wheel drive, low, with a center diff lock and the rear diff lock, and couldn't move. The van was just spinning in all four wheels and not going anywhere. This black ice is no joke. Check it out. No? Okay, we're using some max tracks. Mind your hands out there. We're gonna have to go max tracks here. Place the extant stall, no? Alles engage. Ik, my villa roll, my van stand, do it stall. Do it stall. I managed to get very low crawling playing with the steering wheel. Awesome. Doing it for the gram. Out in the snow. Where he belongs in his natural habitat. How's it? How's it? <laughs> Snow monster. Where he belongs in his natural habitat. How's it? How's it? <laughs> Snow monster. So the situation right now is that this is not broken glass. This is actually ass. Unbelievable though, and that's how we're sliding. We're standing on the edge of the mountain. What we loved about Merino was that it wasn't too full that day, it was midweek. So we were basically there alone. We were like 14 vehicles in the whole place. We never at any time felt pressured. We could just drive at our own leisure, stop, take some photos, have fun in the snow. And once you get to the top, it's like you're transported to a totally different world. 
Harry got the nail plowing his way through the newly fouled snow. So there's no way we have to actually move it through. That's actually only the way to go. The Neil was blocking the way for us, and he's fast. There is another discovery stuck. He's deep behind you, hoor. I'll suck you in. So we're out here, close to Sirius, and uh, taking a walk through the snow. And oh, Jesus, oh, it's deep. I'll show you the rest of it. And almost a whole booty. So we've got our first little obstacle for the day. The snow is about 30 centimeters thick, with some ice up ahead. And we have to actually plow our way through to get to the top. So up next is uh, Mr. Gershwin himself. Let's see how he goes. Planted. That was me planting it in first. <laughs> really? Oh, thank you, Drift. <laughs> Keep going, don't tap off, don't tap off. And here we have Lee Brav trying to plow the snow for us. But he too got stuck in his tuned four tuner. 
you guys should hear that thing, it's got like a straight pipe. It's like, Trrr! it sounds like a bunch of pigeons coming along when he drives past. That's how you get stuck. <laughs> Here we have AJ attempting to snow plow for us. the harder ground towards my towards my bucket yeah. well, now you're stuck mate <laughs> now it's finished The important question is that you enjoy it. <laughs> Didn't get very far. Raising as it runs in the family. Yeah, I'm stuck. I'm busy. Momentum. Ow. So we're making coffee in the snow. <laughs> got his sauce, his voice, boss, he's got his voice, his chips and everything. Man's making a fire in the snow. Camping chairs, here for the day. You staying over? <laughs> so one thing we overlook is decent comms. Guys often overlook comms and spending the money on comms. Now, let me tell you how important comms is. Most of the time, we are in locations that are beyond cell phone reception. We're out of touch with the world. The only communication we have between each other is through our two-way radios. So if someone's stuck at the back, if a vehicle is damaged, if someone got hurt, the only way to communicate is via a two-way radio. So you don't want to be sitting in a situation where you've got bad static and bad communications. And we've hooked up with the guys at MT Communications, who's hooked us up with proper decent high quality pre-owned radios so now our convoy is able to speak 10 to 15 kilometers to each other in the mountains on the road whenever we're traveling and this is so important because your sweeper vehicle needs to say if all the vehicles are in the convoy and your sweeper vehicle is able to clear a lane of traffic and move over to the slow lane and let the whole convoy move over it's also able to tell you if there's a high speed vehicle approaching so this is such an overlooked thing and yet it's your only lifeline when you're out in the wild and for us to be in communication all the time, for the lead vehicle to say, guys, there's black ice, you need to slow down, stop here, we can't do this. It is imperative to your vehicle. So before you go out and spend on many other things and frivolous things, get yourself in communication. Because also when you're out alone and you're able to get onto the right channels and the right frequencies, you are able to radio for help. So give the guys a call at MT Communications, get your vehicle sorted, get a proper aerial, get a proper high wattage radio and a proper handheld radio. You don't need to have both. You can either have a decent in-car radio or a decent handheld radio. One of the most important things is to have an aerial outside the vehicle. So if you don't want to 
permanently mount something, get a magnetic aerial that you put on the roof when you're using it and you put it in the boot when you're not using it. But to be in communication, I mean, you wouldn't leave home without your cell phone. So why would you drive in the mountains without a proper two-way radio system? So have a look at them. Give them a shout. They will be linked in the description of the video below. I also just a special shout out to Neil from Dust and Diesel Overlanding. Give them a follow on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram for the amazing footage that he helped contribute to this day. He was on the camera most of the day. But this is what it's about. It's about bringing your family with your 4x4 vehicle to the snow to experience the snow. Once a year you get out here and you feel as if you're in another part of the world. day in the snow is better than a good day in the office. But enough of the talking, here's some views of the snow from the top. We had an amazing day. The kids were tired, we were tired, but everybody felt complete because we achieved our goal to see the snow. And just like that, it was all over. And this gem on the side of the road is called Moral Coffee. They make coffee and they've got rice pots over there. You can pull over the side of the road and they've got these interesting little things you can sit at. Yeah, how lick is it? So we're all over here and I just have some coffee and some bra because they're brying over there. Take care and be safe from the team at Off The Beaten Track till we see you next time, whether it's in the snow, in the mud, on the rocks or in the water. No plot cut or harm to the making of this video.